with breaking news. I look forward to uh, the next four years to leading, leading our city, but leading it with one voice. Breaking news, El Paso will get a new mayor pledging to unify the city during this historic health and economic crisis. Oscar Leeser won tonight's runoff election with a landslide victory. Good evening and thank you for joining us for ABC 7 to 10 Weekend. I'm Kate Beery. And I'm Eric Elkin and we're in the ABC 7 Alert Center with breaking news. Oscar Leeser is headed back to City Council. We have complete coverage and we'll hear from him live in a minute. ABC 7's Brianna Chavez is with him. Also standing by is ABC 7's JC Navarrete with reaction from the incumbent, D. Margo. Leeser's lead was convincing and insurmountable from the moment the early vote was announced and it did not change through the night. Here are the results as of right now. Leeser with 80% of the vote to Margo's 20. Leeser has been mayor before from 2013 to 2017. He also had a substantial lead in the general election and voters once again overwhelmingly turned out in the runoff election to give him the win. ABC 7's Brianna Chavez joins us live now with Oscar Leeser from the Upper Valley. It's your voice, your vote. Brianna. Eric, you mentioned all of it. Oscar Leeser taking the majority of the lead, 80% of the vote with unofficial results. And joining me now is former Mayor Oscar Leeser and now Mayor Lex stepping back into the mayor mayoral office. Thank you so much for speaking with us this evening. Well, thank you. And um, I want to thank the citizens of El Paso for their great support and the overwhelming uh, vote. Uh, you know, to have over 80% of the vote uh, is, uh, I'm very thankful and very humbled. And I'm looking forward to. Uh, working together and our biggest thing while we were running for office we kept talking about we needed to have a united voice a voice together and uh, I was able tonight to talk to Congresswoman Escobar and we talked about some of the programs that are coming up and we needed to get together and I'm uh, looking forward to meeting with her next week because she said there's some federal programs that we need to work with to make sure we can bring to El Paso so I was very excited to, and uh, thankful that uh, we had that conversation she's done a great job of representing in El Paso and I look forward to working with her uh, working with uh, Judge Samniego and also City Council. There's, I know there's two close City Council races that are too close to call yet, but I look forward to making sure we unite our council and we speak with one voice to the citizens. And, you know, they've had a, uh, a uh, crisis of uh, confidence in their leaders. And I think we saw that today when you see over 80% of the citizens of El Paso ask for a change. And um, I'm thankful and uh, we will work hard every day to continue to earn their trust. So. I, I thank the city of El Paso and I thank my wife for being with me every step of the way. This was a very small campaign team and, and I told you a little while ago we were having this conversation that we didn't go out and hire a campaign team from out of state, from Austin. We literally, it was my wife, my friend uh, Brian and Denise and Eddie. There was three of us that worked on this campaign together and between them three and my wife and I, this was our whole campaign team because we knew what El Paso wanted. We know what El Paso needs, and it was really important that we did that. So again, I'm thankful for all the help I got. The endorsements was incredible, all the endorsements and all the people from the community that endorsed us. So again, thank you to the citizens of El Paso, and I look forward to starting work tomorrow morning to talk to local doctors. Uh, Nico Tejeda from uh, Providence Hospital reached out, and we need to get up to speed on some of the COVID things. So we're We've already I've been inside working and texting and talking to people because we need to start right away. And uh, I look forward to working with all our leaders, state, local, and uh, national leaders to make sure that El Paso is represented and we get um, COVID under control and make sure that our citizens are safe. And one more question. You mentioned that El Pasoans are ready for a change. What do you think was the big difference between you and Mayor Margo that made El Pasoans head out to vote? Well, I can't tell you about Mayor Margo, but I can tell you what I, what I was looking forward to being, and that was to unite our voice and to work together and make sure that El Pasoans are safe. And we will always take uh, safety before profit, and that's very, very important. Uh, so I look forward to working with all these small businesses to make sure how we can keep them safe and keep them operating. So I, again, thank the citizens of El Paso, and this is a great, great uh, victory for our citizens and for El Paso, and I thank them all, and may God bless everyone. Thank you all for being out here. and. Uh, 
I know you guys are a little cold, so thank you again. Thank you so much again, uh, Oscar Leeser, getting 80% of the unofficial vote. He is now becoming mayor-elect, stepping back into the mayoral office, voted as El Paso's next mayor for the next four years. Live in the Upper Valley, Brianna Chavez, ABC7. All right, Brianna, and the leadership in El Paso defined tonight as we get the results from the night's biggest race. El Paso Mayor Dee Margo will not be serving a second term. As ABC7's JC Navarrete reports, Margo has already continued seated the election to mayor-elect Oscar Leeser. JC joins us live now. JC. Eric, good evening. I did have a chance to speak with incumbent mayor D. Margo earlier this evening. And simply put, he just says it's not the results that they were looking for. As we've been reporting, 80% of the vote going to uh, Oscar Leeser earlier this evening. Now, when I did talk to Mayor Margo, he did tell me that while he was disappointed in the result, nothing changes in the way he sees El Paso. He's still very proud of his community. We want to go ahead and give you a look at your screen of folks making their way out there to cast their vote. A lot of folks waiting for Election Day to cast their vote for the city's highest elected office office up for grabs earlier today. Now, after serving a four-year term, Mayor Margo tells me that he is proud of the work his administration did. It was a challenging term for the mayor considering his time in office. He had to deal with a lot, including the migrant surge, the August 3rd mass shooting, and lastly, the pandemic. Now, I did ask the mayor what he hoped to see from Oscar Leeser once he takes the reins back uh, again coming up th this coming year. I want to go forward. I don't want to go backwards. And uh, it's going to be up to him to complete the, uh, the projects that have been started. And one of the most notable, is once we're financially capable of doing it, is the, uh, is the public safety bond. That's absolutely critical. And if, if, if there's any signature project of, of my term, I would say that was it. Now, that bond passing, again, uh, under his tenure, worth more than $400 million. So that appears to be what's uh, on um, Margo's mind, excuse me, this evening. Now, I did get to ask Mayor Margo if he felt that, you know, the handling of the pandemic or the potential rift that appeared to have between him and the county judge may have had an impact on tonight's results. He tells me he doesn't feel that he had a rift with uh, County Judge Ricardo Samaniego. Instead, it's more just a difference of opinions there. I have more on the mayor coming up here on Good Morning El Paso. Make sure to tune in for our conversation. If you do want to listen to the entire interview, you can find that on our website, kvia.com. Reporting live near downtown El Paso, JC Navarrete, ABC7. Meanwhile, the turnout in this runoff election is significantly higher than the last mayoral election in 2017, according to the County Elections Department. It's the first time mayoral elections happen in the fall. The county is predicting a turnout of 12 or 13 percent this time around, according to Elections Administrator Lee and wise. Back in the summer of 2017, 8.8 percent of registered voters cast their ballots. Two other key races in runoffs that will round out the new council. In District 2, which covers central El Paso and parts of Northeast, incumbent Alexandra Anello has had a tough race against Judy Gutierrez, who worked in the District 2 office for years. Anello with a 158 vote lead tonight after losing in the general election. She had been trailing as she was trailing Gutierrez in the initial uh, November 3rd election. And here's her reaction. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to get like a little emotional. It has been a hard race, right? Like my opponent is someone um, that was close to me for a long time that I considered a friend. And so, you know, whatever the numbers are, I'm just, I'm really grateful to the people who have come out and helped. I'm really grateful to, um, you know, the constituents who call me every week or called me on Thanksgiving just to wish me, you know, happy Thanksgiving. And um, it's just emotional. Meanwhile, in District 4, which covers most of Northeast El Paso, newcomer Joe Molinar beating incumbent Sam Morgan by eight percentage points right now. Morgan also trailed during the, uh, Morgan actually led during the November election. Molinar, though, says he worked hard to get out the vote and flip this result. We did analytical uh, analysis of the results from the general election. And so with the help of some great people, great teamwork, we were able to focus on what we needed to upgrade, uh, turn the votes around. We did flyers, we did texting, we did um, mail outs. I contribute the reversal to just folks just didn't get out to vote. I just took a look at the, the numbers and compared to what we had, we're, we're not even out a quarter of the votes that uh, were cast in the Northeast and folks just didn't get out to vote. To the municipal judge number four race, voters favored Lillian Elena Blancas in the November election and again tonight. 
However, as we've reported, she died during the campaign after contracting COVID-19. Council will have to appoint her replacement. And Maria Ramirez heading to the Municipal Court of Appeals after beating Rebecca Tarango 58 to 42 percent of the vote. In the city of Socorro, newcomer Ivy Avalos is your new mayor. Ruben Reyes won the at-large council seat and Ivan Colon Villalobos was re-elected for District 4. For complete coverage of all of tonight's election results and extended interviews, you can go to KVI.com.